In this video, we'll discuss measures of central tendency. Now, our first measure is the mean, which we also call the average. To calculate the average, we add all the entries together and then divide by the number of entries. When we're looking at the notation, we'll see x bar, which means the average, equals the sum of our x's over the number of entries. So let's look at an example here. Say that we have the prices of two liter Coke Zero bottles in local stores. And here are eight entries and we want to know what's the mean price or what's our average for these eight bottles. So I add my eight values together and then I divide by eight. When I do that, and I can use any calculator I want, I'm going to get that that gives me 1 in 27,125 hundred thousands. But we're dealing with money, so we know we round to the hundredth. So we would say that the mean price for a 2 liter Coke Zero bottle is $1.27. Now another measure is called the median, which is the literal middle of our data. The key here is we have to remember to order the data. You always have to order it first. Once the data is ordered, we can then determine is there an odd number or an even number of entries. If it's odd, it will be a literal entry from the set. It'll be the exact center. If it's even, we have to average the two most central values. So the median is not a value in the set, it's the average of two of them. So that's an important thing to remember. If we take our same problem that we had just a minute ago and say we want to determine the median price, the first thing we'll do is order our data. Now we can then say that our data is ordered, let's find that central most value, and since there's eight, we're going to have to find the two central most entries. So I'm going to mark them off from the outside to inside and see that I'm left with $1.23 and $1.25. Since there's two of them there, I will average them together to get $1.24. So the median price is $1.24 for the Coke Zero bottle. It's not a number that's in the, in the entries. It's the center of those two most central ones. They are not the median. $1.24 is the median. Now the mode represents the most repeated entry in our data set. Most commonly this is used for categorical data, but it can be occasionally used for numerical data. When we talk about a mode, you can have no mode, you can have one mode, or a set could be bimodal. If there's more than two, we say there is no mode. So if we go back to our data set again and look for the modal price, we see that the most repeated value in this case is the $1.23. And since it's $1.23, we would say that the modal price for the Coke Zero bottle in our local stores is about $1.23. Now it's important to recognize what is the best measure with what the data we have. And the data does impact what we do. When our data is numerical, we most commonly will use the mean. But there are limitations to the mean. First, we want to often make sure our data is following fairly, uh, fairly symmetric and that there's no outliers or extreme data in comparison to the rest of the data set. When this happens, we use the median. So the median is used when you have extreme data points, something that's way out from everything else. Otherwise, we're most commonly using the mean. Now, if you have a mode, we, again, aren't often going to use it for numerical data. Instead, it is the only way to get that measure of central tendency for categorical data. It's the most repeated word or phrase in uh, a data set. So let's look at some examples. Say that we have data on employee salaries. And if I look at these six entries, the first five are relatively close. And then this one, 96,000, it's way out there from everything else. In that case, we'd want to use the median to calculate the measure of central tendency. If we look at asking people favorite colors, and we have all these colors, we see that the most commonly repeated word is blue. There's no numbers here to calculate, so we know because it's a set of categorical data, we use the mode. And say our last one here, number of minutes studying for a test. If we look, we go from 35 minutes to 66 minutes, and we have numbers all in between there. Nothing's more extreme than another, and it's relatively symmetric data. For that reason, this is a set we'd use the mean to calculate the measure of central tendency. Now another thing that you can do with the average is you can work to change an average. 
Say that you know that you're at a certain uh, test grade. You wanna know, well, what do I need to improve my average? What do I need to make on the next test? To do this, we start with our new desired mean. We're gonna replace that in our equation. Then we got our new number of entries. We'll replace that in our equation. And then we're gonna add up all the values we know plus our unknown will go into that numerator and we'll solve for that unknown value. Let's look at an example to help us understand. Say that Damien ran four and a half, four, six and a half, and five miles over the last two weeks. How many miles would his next run have to be to change his average to six miles per run? So we know that the new desire to change our average, our new desired average is six miles per run. We know that instead of having four entries, which we already have, we're gonna have one more entry because it's the next run. So we have a total of five entries that we're looking at. So let's plug in the pieces to this equation. Our new average is six, our new entries is five, and now we can add up the known plus the one unknown. We don't know how many will be that fifth run, so we're gonna put M for miles. Now let's solve this equation for m. So if I add my numerators together, I'm gonna to get 20 plus m. And now I'm gonna multiply both sides by five to remove my denominator. So five divided by five becomes one, leaving me with 30 equals 20 plus m. Now I can subtract 20 from both sides and be left with m equaling 10. This means that Damien needs to run 10 miles on his next run to increase his average to six miles per run. And you can check that. If I plug 10 in here, 20 plus 10 is 30. 30 divided by five would give me six.